breeding parties, known today as Ryan Donald Shire, Gracie and William Gorman, they are there in the United States today. And they know that we went through that and said we have to publish this so that we have this basic document for ourselves and the friends whom we had around us. What would you say is the importance of the Black Jacobins? That book was written in 1938. That was before the beginning of the war. Most things that you know about nowadays came after the war. But that book was written before the war. So when people began after the war to look to Marxism and to develop their ideas, there was this book already. And it was important because it was applied, it was Marxism applied to the colonial question. So I had already written one, World Revolution, that was published in 37. Well, people, that was okay. But 38 was the, the Marxism applied to blacks. And after the war, people were very much interested in the colonial revolt, and the blacks were interested in revolutionary material. So between them, they made something of the black Jacobin, which I had not expected when I wrote it in... James's analysis of the revolution in Haiti has been very useful and helping us to understand it. One revolution to the, the relationship between social class and race, economy and race, and how the social structure gives rise to certain social classes, um, as well as other factors which I find intriguing. One is, which, one is the impact of colonialism and the colonizer on the persona of local people, especially revolutionaries, the people who would want to change the system, the extent to which they imbibe, and they must, they need to. Some of the, probably you call it sophistication of the colonizer in, in, in attempting to overcome. So one looks at the extent to which the in our sense of the African, the, the, we, we, um, we, uh, the African who has, who has been we, what I want to say, come, come from Africa. The extent to which that person can at all continue reasonably any, any aspect of his, his own self, culture, origins and so on. All right, so, so there are about three or four areas in which I think um, James has been very useful. I know he uses a critical, probably some say Marxist methodology and approach, which I think useful. So let me start with perhaps the, the relationship between what is going on in the colonial country, uh, under colonialism, and, 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 and what happens in the colony. In terms of the revolution, James shows us how the, 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 the activities, the struggles in France, at the revolution in France, the, the Bastille, the, 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 um, the end of that system, the French Revolution, affected what was going on in Haiti. How the victories of the proletariat uh, encouraged what was happening in Haiti. The, the slaves of Haiti to fight and destroy. We see that too in the rest of the Caribbean. When, for instance, in the Second World War, um, we were very careful to understand what was happening. We in the Caribbean, um, in um, Arising Starblings, which is a which is a book done by who is it? Uh, Stone. Stone. No, not Stone. It's not Stone. It's um, from Jamaica. Yes. How um, what was happening at the at the second at the World War and 
how what people were there and so on, how that affected what we did and what we thought. And, and having people there, Cipriani and all that, the struggles for the working class, the work, working man's association and so on, how that was affected by the struggles of the proletariat in Europe as well as in America. The creation of the trade union movement and all of that, how that affected what we did here and how we understood, how we even tried to get some of the literature which at the time was banned. Certainly it was banned in Trinidad up to around the 60s. Uh, but because it was thought to be um, leftist revolution mm -hmm. so, so. So, so, so James takes us into that kind of dynamic between the colonizer and the colony uh, and how one affects it and how the proletarian struggles awakens that, that kind of struggle as well. Although the struggles are not identical. The second thing I think about James is his analysis of the race class di dynamic. Um, many of us in the Caribbean, we've come from Africa, our ancestors, and we have this Pan Africanism. Many of us think, and I think it's because we live it, that race is, it. race is the most important factor, and that is what we have to struggle on. James, for James it was not so. Although the, the lived reality of the people, what you live every day, is race, is racial discrimination. In fact, James saw beyond that, that it was really class. And in, and in that sense, it seems a little bit like Du Bois, hmm. where Du Bois showed that slavery was there all the time. I mean, people were doing certain kinds of work with me all the time. But, but what happened with colonialism was that the, 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 the ideology was there implemented that you, you associate certain types of work with black people. And therefore, therefore it comes around to, to, to be explained that because people are black, because you're a certain race, then you have to do certain kinds of work and therefore justify certain kinds of kinds of exploitation. And I think James shows that it, that it is really that the dynamic is really class. In that sense he also shows where in Haiti for the mulattoes especially when their interests lay in siding with the colonizers, they did so. But when it lay in siding with the, with the slaves, they did so. It, it, it was a class interest that was important. And uh, I think James shows up very well. Um, I, 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 that has influenced my understanding of the class race dynamic. Uh, uh, Whereas race is, and for us, um, Africanness is, is seen as the, the, the level on which we must struggle. We, we, we realize that, that that really isn't so. That really, for, for, you know, those who say race first, we realize that there's a class dynamic. In situations where we see race is common, and there's all people of the same race but different class. We see the same kind of struggles in our exploitation. So I think, so in that sense, um, James has influenced my uh, sociology, my understanding, my analysis uh, of that, that. That's so very important dynamic for us, race or class. And, and that contradiction that we live in the exploitation especially for the people who are poorer, live the exploitation. You cannot get into certain jobs, you cannot get, you know, you cannot get education, you don't have access, you can't get healthcare. Mm. Um, nothing, nothing. Because the system, and it's a system of capitalism, creates an ideology, those who control this and create an ideology which justifies, which, 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 <laughs> which prevents you from, from looking at where the exploitation is, who it's what's working and for what. Much of what I have come to understand and how I understand sociology, I must actually do that to my one of my professors, Susan Craig, Dr. Craig, who was very um, 
instrumental in, she was my mentor as it were. And indeed it's from she who, her work on uh, sociological theorizing in, in the English speaking Caribbean, where she shows up, how are we to understand ourselves? We this this race class thing, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of our theories upon race, like M.G. Smith, uh, plural society. We are plural, we come from different places, and we bring our cultures here, and uh, we cannot uh, share them, and that kind of stuff. Craig shows, using a historical kind of materialist perspective, that he came here from different places, yes. Black people came here, African people came here as laboring class. Europeans were here as master class. But in their interests, their interests were what? Uh, profit maximization and so on, wealth for Europe and so on. In those interests, they were able to articulate an ideology of race. That means to explain why are black people suffering? Because they're black, the ideology says. Because they come from a backward culture, because they have a non-Christian or whatever other kinds of religions and so on. And not because we have been exploiting them <laughs> under slavery. You're working hard for no money and nothing. And what? Eric Williams' book, Capitalism on Slavery, shows us that as well. It's capitalism, mm -hmm. it's not race. Race is used as a justification. Race is, race is institutionalized, so we feel it, we live it every day. It's in front of our face, but it isn't really race. And, and, and. So, yeah, so that I think is, a, is such an important dynamic. A lot of us still operate on the level of race. Still explain, still struggle on the level of race. James is able to bring that up. I don't know intentionally or not. All of it was a, was a contradiction in itself, in himself, in that. He was a black slave. He was a slave. But he had, he was a privileged slave. And he had a facility. He was able to read. He, he was an intelligent, but he, he was literate. And so he used the advantages of, of that uh, position of his position to do two things. One, he plotted the revolution very carefully. He didn't he didn't engage in uh, what you call that uh, guerrilla war. Sophisticated military disciplined activity. But at the same time, but on, on the other hand, he wanted more slaves from Africa. But he said when they he bring them, they will, they will be free. But he wanted them to come. Uh, he, he paid allegiance to, to, the, to the French state. He, he saw himself as a Frenchman with, with the sophistication and so on. Frenchman. Contradictions in his person. And that contradiction led to, I think, there was death because he was tricked by. by by, by those who control the system mm -hmm. and it led to his death. Somebody else in this survey was that mm -hmm. had to continue continue the the, the Yes. yes. Um, that, so I think he brings it out even in that early work of uh, yeah, that that contra that in the, the black Jacobins. Uh, yes, in the black Jacobins. Of the, the privilege. And, and we can interpret that today, those who are educated, those who are, have, uh, have high status in society. And in all this thing about uh, what we call it, um, um, well, black skin, white mass, mm. and uh, fans from home, mm. and uh, what we call ourselves, black, uh, get it to Yes. Hmm. People who, who have that internal conflict with themselves. Okay. 
I don't think all of us have a level of it because we're trained in, um, we're trained, we're cultured in the Western way of thinking and so on. And we see no other way. Mm. So not only, uh, some of us marry white, white men or women and um, we think that that is an uplift going up a step higher and so on. This Hegel thing, many of those thinkers of that day well, and Hegel was, was, was pretty, more, more in the classical tradition, many of them were racist. Um, but maybe what, however, we, the same way we look at our own selves today and see the extent to which we prefer, some of us prefer, people of lighter color, or but, 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 but certainly, in all our research, we see that when that we have a different kind of um, affect people like the color than, than others. James probably fell into that same kind of trap. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay, moving slightly from there to his political sociology, mm. what would you say are uh, his best contributions to a better understanding of politics James, and James society, James. yes. A better understanding of politics. Yes, in the Caribbean or in the world globally. Um, maybe a good example of that is his relationship with Eric Williams in Trinidad. Well, as they were friendly, they, they, they broke. They, 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 they were uh, initially intellectually uh, compatible, they broke on certain issues which Williams emphasized and he didn't and, and became more or less an enemy ostracized by Williams. And, and you see, again, I think it comes to the fundamentals of what is the system in which we live. For example, Eric Williams, in a beautiful work, very accurate work on capitalism and slavery, as well as on Columbus de Castro. When he came to the whole independence thing, getting independence from Britain, what Eric Williams did was toward the line in terms of two things. One, um, he agreed, and he had to, I think he had to, in the Constitution to maintain the nominated nominated element in, in, in the Parliament, in the two houses, which, which now becomes the upper house. At that time, in the colonial time, it was people were selected on the basis of their property. And there was, a, I think, the value of 12,000 pounds a year, something like that. Um, and they were, they were uh, elevated to the upper house and to be part of Parliament. In doing the Constitution, when, when Eric Williams went to England to agree on what our Constitution should he had he, he maintained that element. Therefore, maintaining a control over decision making, laws, and so on, by a, a, an elite, a property elite, which had vested interest in this, having the system in certain ways which would benefit them. And he maintained that. Another thing happened when he went to elections the first time in 1956. And he needed a majority in the in the house to to form the government. He didn't get it. I think he got eleven out of fact I can't write the numbers and he got to twenty four. And it was the colonial authority that gave him the tool he needed to get him a job. So he's indebted to them. They gave it to him and not Butler. Mm. Butler was an evolutionary. Butler was a fighter for the interests of the poor and so on. Of course, Butler was not as sophisticated and polished as Eric Williams was. So he was more accepted by them. And, um, so Eric Williams did things, I think, which he had to do. 
If not, what are you going to do? Revolution. <laughs> and you, you have to do it. And different. And I think it was on that, it was on the, that level that, that he, he had to break with um, James. Because James was more revolutionary, more, more leftist, more James advice how it was going to take. And he broke with him. And, but that brings us to a reality of, of our day. Our knowledge of where we are, political, and we live in capitalism. Of the world. Uh, there is, there's only that amount of latitude, you can't go beyond that, and, let, and then you become an enemy, you become a threat. Mm -hmm. So we live in that contradiction, dilemma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm aware that the sociology unit that you coordinate has proposed a Steel Art James Chair in Sociology. Can you use his contribution to the sociology of education as a background to explaining why this chair would make a difference to the University of the West Indies? Yeah, I think I think James's work and what he stood for is is has has to to be acknowledged. And I think the Department of Sociology is is one because he's contributed so much to our understanding of things, even, even with his own contradictions and contradictions around us. I think he has not been given the kind of uh, acknowledgement uh, that he should. Um, um, and also, he, 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 the, the whole thing about um, cricket and uh, West Indian unity. Uh, the need for that and so on. I think James is a master in those areas. Um, having a chair in sociology on his name uh, will, uh, will allow us to look at his work, will let us to have it, have it available for our students, and um, again research his contribution to the body of knowledge of sociology. I'm glad you mentioned the, his uh, uh, love and knowledge about cricket. Mm -hmm. Can we use that to talk a little mm -hmm. about his contribution to the sociology of sports? Okay. And sociology mm -hmm. of arts? Yes, yes, because that is also a concern of ours. Mm -hmm. Both at the level of the players and what's happening in the management, what's happening in the room, how we have changed. How we have changed over time to be in a world, um, a world of Victor, is it what? Is it? It's so about we are now very much struggling. Um, and because of, um, cricket is one of the integrating factors in the in, Caribbean, in, in the whole program. Yes, so, so I think we can, we can use that. In, um, I am not first in cricket and mm. um, all the, 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 the mm. <laughs> details of the game and what it means. So, so I could accept the unifying, uh, exhilarating uh, uh, experiences that we have with cricket. Yes, there is a claim that James makes about cricket being part of the civilizing process for the Caribbean, the way people are polished in the game to accept defeat and even when they win not to gloat uh, and humiliate the losers that that is uh, part of the Caribbean culture today that people tend to be very civil to each other maybe when he was alive it was more so than today when things are becoming more violent mm -hmm. but do you think he's giving too much credit to cricket for this aspect of Caribbean culture that is found even among people who've never played cricket or who are not familiar with cricket. I think we can I think we cannot separate that. That sophistication and discipline that we get from cricket from our colonial past. From um, imbibing and continuing our definitions of what is what is noble, what is sophisticated, what is discipline, what is so on more colonial training and I think we have 
we have um, mastered and improved that training. Mm. It is certainly cricket. Um, we, are, we, are, we have been in the past, we've been the best in exemplifying those characteristics. Mm. I, can't, I don't think we could divorce that from because we got cricket from Britain. We were trained there. We were trained in cricket. There was a time when only white people played cricket, you know. Um, so I think that uh, so I could, cricket exemplifies that relationship. Mm. So what would you say to a critic who might say that the Caribbean um, tradition of hospitality is really not tied to colonialism because colonialism was not a hospitable no, I think si I, system I, of rule, but maybe to the African, I, I think so. I, I agree with that. Asian that and uh, Amerindian yes. traditions. Yes, I, I, I think so. Our uh, we, we live in a contradiction. Yes. Our roots, our histories, and in, 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 in earlier civilizations, simple, genuine based civilizations, um, and, and our ability to retain some of that. I think that is expressed in our warmth. Um, the way we treat strangers or each other, uh, etc. I don't think it is colonialism. Colonialism has taken The more we become versed in the colonial tradition, the less we are. Although, it's not that simple, we live in contradiction. Okay, if we might close with this question, what would you say is the most important contribution that James made to the understanding of the special circumstances that women find themselves mm -hmm. in a capitalist world? Um, James, I think, was successfully able to look at the, the social structure, the relationship between social structure and gender. For gender, we're talking largely about the subordination of women and the exploitation, if that is a word of women. Uh, and I think that that is so important to understand that that relationship is not necessarily an interpersonal relationship between two, two, two genders, but it is, a, it is embedded so, 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 so much more firmly in, in the social structure.